Hi everyone, you're listening to the Via Lucci podcast, uncensored and completely unedited discussions about life and everything in it. We hope you enjoy the show. I'm starting to like the music more and more. I was going to say good morning, but that's yeah. probably redundant. Um, hello. Good evening. Well, it depends where you are. Elliot Grove, how you doing, mate? Yeah, hey, I'm overworked and underpaid, and I'm yeah, Canadian yeah, yeah. here in London, and I'm loving every minute of it. How about that? How long have you Fantastic. been in London? You've been here a while. Oh, since... 1986. Okay. So, so still settling in then, yeah. <laughs> so you're Canadian? Yeah. Or you went to... So uh, how often do you go back? Well, before COVID, yeah. I used to go back three, four times a year. We've got hubs in Montreal, Toronto, and Vancouver, right. New York, LA. So I used to go and do a circuit. Oh. I was wondering how you kept your accent. I thought, oh, you go back all the time. Well, my family thinks I've given in and sold out to you yeah. Brits. <laughs> yeah, who do you think you are coming back here? Yeah, <laughs> la di da um, So you're the founder of the Raindance film. Is, it, is, uh, uh, is, it, is there a bigger thing? It's, that's what it, it's a Raindance film festival. Raindance film school. We school. have. And also I founded the British Independent Film Awards, right, which yeah. is a big deal, December 5th. I noticed on the, your website so you've, you've got contact points like you're just saying in like LA and Australia so what is that for film that's is that for this the um the courses yeah the the, the festival is only in London yeah and we have hubs we call them where they do community networking plus oh, right, occasional okay. courses depending yeah. who's local and so on and how would how would you describe the Rain Dance Film Festival what would you say it is it's kind of the port of call for emerging filmmakers yeah. first-time filmmakers so, for example, Sadie Frost, whose office is around the corner from where we sit, uh, she had a film at Raindance called One, a, a Bird Flew In, she acted in. Uh, my first um, volunteer was a guy called Edgar Wright. And about a year in, I had a late teenager who made a terrible mistake as a teenager. He told mom and dad he wanted to be a filmmaker, and they went, what do you want to do that for? you got to be crazy. So the deal he made with mom and dad to keep them happy was he got a degree at English here in London at oh, UCL. Right. And then he used to come by me and he, used to, he made a, a film for 4,000 quid called The Following. I'm talking about Chris Nolan. Right. And I basically started Rain Dance as a thought experiment. Can you make a movie with no money? We were all flat broke. Yeah. I'd gone bust the year before. Can you make a film without any film training? None of us had been to film school. And can you make a film without any film experience? Yeah. None of us had done it before, and here we are 30 years later, still standing, and everyone thinks it's great, except my bank manager. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, yeah you're a slave to your art. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. it's funny that uh, I always thought, was is it a good thing that now anyone can just throw a movie out? But then does the standard drop? No, it hasn't really. Well, it's good and bad. The, the Making yeah. films on your cell phone means it's very democratic. Yeah. But it means there's so much Ideas movies out there. Ideas are more free, yeah. And, of course, there's a lot of films that should never have been made. Yeah. Uh, this last year at the festival, we had 12,500 submissions, shorts, features, documentaries, and that many. virtual reality. Oh, right. Oh, really? From, from 121 different countries, and we showed 54 features oh, wow, and 200 many. shorts. So are you just, are you like the Oscars? Are you just planning the next event constantly? Like it, it doesn't, the beginning one ends and the other one starts the planning. We started working on 2022 uh, in July and it's in October 2020. So what are you doing in between that then? Are you just pushing people in charge of that and getting on with like, are you filmmaking? Like, are you, or, cause you got the screenwriting. So what are you doing? <laughs> What do I do? <laughs> okay, occasionally I sleep. What I mean is, are you making time for films? <laughs> like, I'm producing three features right now. I also teach at the Raindance Film School. Right. And I write a lot of, um, you know, stuff on blogs and our website. I've written a few books. So um, you're acting as a sort of executive producer for the Raindance Film Festival. Yeah, I, you're guess not, you, okay, I, right. I, I guess you could say that. You're not selling tickets. So I, <laughs> I still do the bins every morning right. because no one else does it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's a funny thing, even like the, the place we were at, I was talking to somebody a, a couple of days back and I was saying, um, oh yeah, we, the podcast, and had the magazine going, we, we're doing some filming stuff and all that. But I said, I used to turn up on the Sunday and clean the toilets before anybody arrived. Yep. I never used to tell anybody, but I thought, because it was a Sunday before the, the cleaners used to come in Sunday night from the week before, but the toilets were sometimes dirty. So I used to come and I thought, I'd be cleaning thinking, 
this isn't right. This is upside down. Why am I? But I thought, no, morally, you have to do those things. You have to feel like, you know, you're you're not putting other people in charge to do things. I know that space. I know that yeah. space. <laughs> and it was unpaid. So we sort of... <laughs> of course, I know uh, that space too, unfortunately. <laughs> um, right, so go, to go back to y- your story, I, I, I hope you, you're not bored of talking about this, but so you grew up in an Amish community. Is that how it's pronounced? Amish, yes. Amish, yeah. Oh, is it Amish? There's no H. I was wondering if it's Amish. Oh, there's different. I call it Amish, but oh, you can Amish. call it whatever you want. I, I think we'll go with that then. Yeah. <laughs> Considering so you grew up, yeah, I think Where we'll go with that. Where did that originate? Do you know? What's the, is it an American? Uh, no, well, a bunch of um, Protestants yeah. in the center of Germany, Switzerland, Austria yeah, yeah, yeah. fled the persecution back in the 1600s, ended up in Pennsylvania. And then in the British American War of 1810 to 12, they said they didn't want to cause trouble, so they migrated up to the king's country outside Toronto, oh. Canada. And my great great whatever grandfather, the family name was Groff. Groff. And you can imagine one of those British guys with the red epaulets right, at a farm yeah, yeah. table giving out deeds of land. What's your name, Groff? How was and that he wrote, spelled? Was it like an umlaut above? I can see like with an F on yeah, the end. Right here. And he wrote Grove. Grove. So oh. Grove. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm surprised you didn't stick another O in there just to give it a bit more. So, so you Hollywood. Got, you got Corleone then, yeah, <laughs> basically by someone, <laughs> yeah, yeah a... by by some immigration guy. Yeah, yeah Godfather like, Part Two. That's They're where just like, he's yeah, from. Remember Corleone? Yeah. yeah, two O's would have been Groove. Yeah, I could see you ameliorating the name just a little. <laughs> yeah. I'm in the entertainment business. That's what Maybe we do. Maybe you should both. change it. Yeah, <laughs> you can have that. Yeah, Elliot Groove, <laughs> record producer <laughs> slash filmmaker. Um, so, can you what? So, did you grow up in it from a? Like a child. Yeah, I was always told never ever to go to movie theater because the devil lived there. Course, and here yeah, I am yeah. doing the devil's work. What can you remember of it? Like how far back can you remember? Well, I left the community when I was 10. My dad became a missionary, he took us all to Mogadishu, Somalia. Oh, right. oh, wow. Oh, wow. So I spent a few years there. But my father was the first Western victim of Al Qaeda, an Ethiopian sheikh, yeah. heard there was a Christian in town and walked two weeks into Mogadishu to seek the revenge for oh, the rape Jesus. and pillage of his village 800 years ago by yeah. the last crusade. They got lost there. Right. The real Donald Trumps, those guys. Yeah, yeah. And my dad. Oh, God, oh my goodness. goodness. And then I ended up in Toronto, went to art school. Um, my three-year post-secondary school graduation certificate proclaimed to be an expert in nothing we're doing about today. Right. I am, however, a qualified technician in something called Seer Perdu, lost wax bronze casting, the ancient art of the Greeks. Say so that again. Let, what? Lost wax bronze casting. It's so the cast for bronze statues. Okay. Sculpture. Yeah. So without my pocket, I came here first for a few years in the 70s, worked for Henry Moore and another British sculptor called uh, Sir Anthony Caro. That's why I wear these dark glasses, because I got spark eye f- the, from the welding fl- sparks. Oh, oh really? Oh, Six years ago, I was blind. But thanks to your British and the National Health, I can see, because oh, I nice, had my yeah. cataracts removed. Oh. Have either of you had cataracts removed? No. No. <laughs> Look, it's a 12-minute operation. There's only, no. There's only two times that makes you squirm. The first is when they shove the hypodermic syringe into your eyeball oh, to God. freeze it. Oh, so you're not no. awake. Yeah, of course. No. Yeah. They tell you to look to the ceiling. No. And the needle oh, under I'll, I'll, I'll go blind. <laughs> oh, I'll, I'll take the blindness. <laughs> and, 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 <laughs> oh, it's making. Oh, it's making. Oh. <laughs> and, and, <laughs> that's like a horror. That, that is, uh, well, that is something from a horror movie. I have seen that in a horror movie. <laughs> and your cheek slowly goes numb. And then you're lying on a table feeling no pain. And I heard zzzz. And you can smell burning no, flesh. Yeah. And they realize they're cutting your eyeball open to put the new piece of plastic that's in. Not, you, you're not doing that awake. No way. <laughs> I'll, I'll go blind. Forget it. I'll, it'll be a cool. It's, it's literally making me feel sick. Four <laughs> hours later, you can see. It's that, great. that is fantastic. And, and well done for sticking. <laughs> there was a quarter of a second there. I thought, this is winding me up. <laughs> that's, not, that's not real. You don't, you're not awake. They, they made a mistake with this eye. They put the wrong piece of plastic in it. And I'm trying to see whether or not I should resubmit myself to that ordeal or not. You see, with this oh. eye, I get momentary glimpses of the future. Oh, right. <laughs> 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 you, Fantastic. So, no, you should keep that. That's yeah, beautiful. Yeah. 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 What? I, I haven't seen a lottery number yet. Damn. <laughs> it's only sort of quarter. Well, that's the thing. We are. We it's are mostly s- just me, me doing stuff, making breakfast next morning. <laughs> so how? What if you took your glasses off? How do you generally? What do you feel? See? Sort of. No, like? I can see anything, but these lights will give me a It'll migraine. Be a struggle. Yeah. Okay. So this color keeps the. You know, see, there's a yeah. thing come out just yesterday on the BBC. They're saying they're one step closer to um, getting rid of paralysis. 
Like literally yesterday I saw this. And it's not a joke. They, they did an interview with a scientist. He said they've just realised that the, it was one of these accidental things. So they're using, chem so it's mice. They were getting mice with the, the back end didn't work. You know, they couldn't use their legs. Um, and they're injecting various things to get the nerve endings, but the nerve endings are dead. You can't really do anything. It's like, a, well, what do you do? And they've realised that what they're doing, this thing is water-based, it's exciting the nerves. It moves around very quickly, which excited the nerves, which then stimulated the nerves to grow. So this mice that they show, it's just dragging its back legs. The legs have now started to move. Wow. And it's just a water-based injection into the spinal wow. column. Wow. And they show a few of them. And the guy said, yeah, we, it's an accident because it was, the, it was the way the molecules were moving. It wasn't the chemicals. It was the way they were moving, stimulated the nerves, which then grew back. So then you see it, it's, it's sort of like it's moving its legs. And you go, well, that was broken back. You, you know, two weeks ago at Raindance, we had Sir Michael Caine, and he's oh. lost his mobility. He's walking with the, he can't oh, do really? steps. I bet he would like to hear that story. Yeah. 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 I mean, it's not a little thing. The guy was saying, like, this is like amazing. It's a water based thing that we just the, put in. I saw a lady the other day, a bit of a weird tangent, we'll yeah. remember, but hey, uh, there's a lady the other day, and she had like literally like a robot suit thing. Oh, just to keep you going, yeah. yeah. No, no, it was like she, she'd had, I think she had meningitis and she'd had to, they, she had both her arms and both her legs um, had to be amputated. Eesh. I know, the thing. Yeah. And I was like, ooh. Um, but then they said yeah, she's returning to her job as a teacher or something like wow. a couple of years later. And she was just yeah. walking into school just, and well, they, I was just like, I didn't know they had that. It, it was kind of like really, oh yeah, there's, she's got a robot suit, she's got an exo uh, suit thing. And I was like... Where did that come from? I remember watching that there was a uh, uh, so it was about chimps and they were wiring it up to a computer game mm -hmm. so they couldn't use its arms and legs. It was like a pong, yeah, ping, ping. But then it started over time. It was clumsy. It didn't know what it was doing. And over time, like the brain, you just become more nuanced. Mm -hmm. So then it was able to play this sort of pong thing where it just it got the balls, but it's using it from the brain. So you have to go, yeah, it's not the arm, the limbs really. If the brain stimulates a piece of metal, you know, robotics to say move, mm -hmm. then you do it. But then you stop thinking about it. So your brain, your brain just said, yeah, that limb needs to go there, which is really what's happening anyway. You know, the brain is telling the body what to do. So all you need is to connect that to the arm of the robot and you just think and it goes and after time you forget. So now, that's really all it is. I mean, all it is. But guys, talk about gratitude. Here we are in the studio. We can all get up and go to the toilet unassisted ourselves. Yeah. And what, uh, and the people that go to work with these challenges I yeah. mean, so inspiring. I've, i said this on the podcast before when i was you know i'd come off the streets i'd just done security and i was trying to i had no education so i was doing a sort of a comedy pilot plus putting a magazine together plus doing a podcast and still having to go work at night in factories and the, but there were times when i was thinking there's no there's 50 people involved here and i'm still working in stacking chairs at night and this is, it's physically impossible to be in between all these people with no money. Yeah. So I used to play mental gymnastics with myself. This, I swear to God, this is what I used to do. Because at certain points, there would be a crack where I'm thinking, I can't actually do this anymore. Um, and I would sit there and I, it started a bit silly. Then I realized, oh, this works. I would sit there when it's too much. I would sit down and I would imagine I'd go through the rigmarole of pretending I was disabled right now and i think right if i had to leave the house now what would happen and i would act it out in my head and it become more and more nuanced where it wasn't just well it's quite difficult i would think what what would i be feeling as i was getting off the chair and how bad would i feel when i'm trying to get down the stairs and how embarrassed would i be for myself and tired and what would i be thinking at the time and how would i feel getting over to the thing what would i be thinking about mm. when i used to walk going down the stairs, having to stop because I'm tired, mm. getting into the chair, opening the door. And I would do that, and it would be like a five-minute thing of every moment. What would I now be doing? And then I'd just get up, and I'd walk, and I'd realize, wow. Like, so it's not that bad. It's, so it's not that bad. Yeah. What a great exercise. But, I mean, it, it almost sounds gimmicky until you do it because yeah. you can train yourself, and your brain forgets that you're not thinking anymore. You're literally going, how would I be feeling yeah. when... Yeah, and it would take me five minutes. I'd imagine everything. I'd think about trying to get my leg over. How now? There was a one thing when I got, I got run over when I was a kid, and I, I had to learn how to walk again. So I remember the feeling that never left me of I had to learn to walk and going. Why are my legs not moving? I don't understand this. Like this, it's like my body's betrayed me, which stayed through me through personal development. When I realised, oh, you're not. 
you've got to you've got to pull the levers of your body and your mind mm. it's not there it will pull you in directions you need to grab the levers and force it to go in directions it doesn't want to and things like that so that helped me a bit where i remember the feeling of going when i was off the drugs and things and i had to start walking thinking why are my legs not well i don't get it well, but i just use that and i'm telling you no matter how bad it is you can get up and just walk out and i remember the um, a feeling of relief mm. that I could get up and then going, well, nothing's a big deal now. Like you just, we can go to your store. And I remember those feelings of like, do not complain. You've got a roof over your head. No. I've, I've had friends of mine where, um, even when I was struggling, I was doing all these things and whatnot, but I didn't have anybody in my life. I was on you know, Lone Ranger. And then trying to explain to him that you've, you've, you've got it harder than me because you've got a lot of people around you trying to with careers and things that makes you feel like the safety somewhere mm. but you being on your own mm. is sort of like it's a freedom so when i think like you've got nothing i think anyone like i don't know what to do in my life i've got to go have you got a roof tonight yeah have you got a little part-time job yeah i've got the job i don't go so you no, you haven't got nothing you've got freedom yeah like you haven't got any back you got kids all these things that you thought if you did have and you want to do something mm. too late you can't you've got all these things that holding you've got a mortgage you've got a thing you've got four kids you can't do anything so having nothing as long as you can get up and walk around and mm. you've actually got freedom in front of you it's a, it's a gift which sounds like it's not a tr trick to me that 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 works like yeah so being able to as you said just get up and go to the toilet well then you've basically can go and do anything like That's there's true. nothing holding you back my granddad used to say back in the farm he said the more keys you have the more you are possessed and that was the more responsibility. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is true, isn't it? Well, wow. yeah. So it's, it's kind of a Buddhist kind of thing, isn't it? You know, more possessions you have, you know, actually those things end up owning you. They hook you in, yeah. So if you've got nothing, as long as you've got a roof over your head, you're not starving. You've got a clear space to go and do anything. It's not a try to think of like these little mental tricks. It's not. It that's what it is. You're free. You, no, you, I, I saw these guys when I was in India. I saw these guys, and they literally were naked. Oh bowl, God! With a bowl. And, They've gone they had, full. They, all they had was the bowl. And they would just sit there and but it, they, did, they didn't beg, but because they, they were Buddhist guys, they were sort of I think they were Buddhist, sort of monks. And um, but they did complete naked all, all year round. And uh, yes, if anyone wants to give them something, that's fine. But they just sat there. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, even before we were recording this, I was just talking to Karam about like we're trying to find a new place. And like it's that thing of do you do you keep where you are because you it's OK or do you now kick the ball further and start to chase another ball further down the road? But my thing was always, um, it doesn't work for everyone because you've got to have experience behind you. And the experience came accidentally. So it's not like a thing I learned <clears throat> was having nothing, having to go out the house, knowing that the rent's got to be paid in two days mm. and you've got nothing. And somehow you figure it out because you're out of desperation, mm. which is another thing. If you, if you, any luxury, you won't do it because you'll make excuses. So I, 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 I only lived on a 24-hour uh, re recurring day. There was no point planning for it because people were going to jail, getting shot that night. You didn't know what was going to happen the next morning. So nothing was planned until the end of the month. Although there was no for any money. And then when, okay, I got two days to pay the rent. Now I've got to find the rent because I'm going to be paying the rent this month. Um, so I had that thing in my head of like walking out the house with nothing and I have to make it work. You know, I'll see somebody clean the car. Do you need a hand? Two quid. Somebody clean the windows I'll, I'll go help you for a day give me 20 quid oh there's a thing cash goes i could buy that it's broken sell it to there and i'll just make it work mm. so i carried that with me and it like i i had trust in out of desperation you can do amazing things but so what would happen is as De things desperation is the no it's, invention, a, it's an yeah, adrenaline yeah. like it's like being able to summon, summon up adrenaline so when it came to like but isn't that in the isn't that tiring though no, but this is the thing, it becomes normal, so it's not tiring anymore. So what happens but is... It, but the, it is a bit, though. I mean, surely... No, I don't want it. This is the thing, I don't want it. So let's say when we're putting this together and I've no money, or the new place, we've got to step up to the work, but I haven't got the money. I know that you can go from nothing and make it happen if the, out of desperation. And what I would always do is, and this now is just, this is the motor that runs behind me. I don't have to think about it anymore. Just burn all the bridges behind you. Hmm. Which sounds That's like your advice. No, no, but burn your bridges. Well, because a clean, a clean start to a normal person, yeah, that doesn't make sense. Um, but if your whole life was like, I've got no options, I have to make things work, and you've made them work, mm. the brain develops in a certain way where there's no risk because I know what I've done before. Mm. So I would think, right, 
we need to go to another place. I haven't got the money. I'll, f- I'll, I'll, I'll get us in there. I'll sign the contract and I'll figure it out afterwards. It does. Uh, there's no options now. I have to do it. And then it's amazing what when you've got the back to you or what you can actually achieve when you go, I forcibly made myself have no, there's no plan. But I can't get out of this now. So I would just throw the thing out and go, sod it. Let's do it again. Because it's always worked in the past. Yeah, but this is the magic of the creative industries, be it music or dance or film or writing, where you take absolutely nothing yeah. and create an artifact, yeah. a piece of art yeah. of whatever form, that hopefully you can monetize. And if you're worried about the money starting out, it's not going to happen because yeah. then you're making the art for the money, which is yeah. which puts you in a very basic and level. And I understand that I'm making a deal with the universe of like, you know, this isn't guaranteed. You go, you know what? I know. Yeah, well, the universe um, is, has terrific answers, but you can't ask it. You have to. Yeah. But it's like, I'm not being out, delusional. You've got to find Oh, it'd be yeah. fine. It's like, no, I know what I'm doing. I'm signing up for something that I can't afford. I don't know how it's going to work. The money isn't there to cover it. Mm. I'm, I'll, I'll go with it. I'll do the risk. I'll make it work. I started Rain Dance with 150 pounds. I spend 100 pounds on faxes to people around the world. It cost me in the day a, a pound of fax, and 83 wow. of them showed up. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> I remember uh, there's a guy, who was, I used to talk to people in nightclubs just because I'd meet random people. I used to work security, but it was amazing because you'd have private parties and people that usually, wouldn't usually come to a club, yep. surgeons, airline pilots, and I'd just corner them for the evening and just ask them every question about everything. And I was asking, talking to a guy about life, and um, he was a musician, and um, he said to me, he said, you know, like you said, they have all these big sympath- synth- synth- I can't say it, syntheses, so orchestra. Sim- symphonies sim- sim- symphonies symphonies i just realized i couldn't say until it's the first time i've ever tried to say the word symphonies you've just betrayed your lack of education <laughs> yeah, yeah. um so i oh. <laughs> oops I, no i i he said yeah a big sympathy you said you know it starts with one person going ding 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 on it yep. that's when it all starts. It just starts with that yep. ding what what where do we go from here two three and i thought okay yeah i remembered that for life um but anyway, so that's another life stuff. So you um, you started doing so the the the, the hang on, so you saying that the uh, the event came before you making films because you uh, said you hadn't made any film. Well, I I'd worked on films. I was I worked as a scenic artist. I worked at the BBC years ago. Oh. I worked on the last year of Monty Python and oh. lots of stuff. That I saw lots of movies being made, but I had no idea how to make a movie. So I started basically the film school in 1992, the festival in '93, because I couldn't believe all these films. I had noticed that this dull, damp, dirty island, which used to make 150 films a year, if you count all the stakes through the heart, Hammer House of Horror and the Kevin yeah, films. Yeah. The year I started Rain Dance, only six. One of them, oh, wow. My Beautiful Andrette, Stephen Freer's first theater music uh, film. He'd done TV before. And then I knew that Edgar Wright and Chris Nolan, so I thought to start a film festival to celebrate British independent film. And of course, you British thought I was mad and just gave me a pass. But the Americans, the Mexicans, the Japanese, they all came. Five years later, I'm still sort of feeling annoyed at you British. So I started the British Independent Film Awards. Oh, okay. (laughs) And I got another big round of, you know, British farts in the face. (laughs) Uh, But that's established now. And now Raindance is truly an international film festival. And the British Independent Film Awards is probably... Well, there's BAFTA and the BIF, as we call them, side by side, highlighting undiscovered talent. The logline of Raindance is discover, be discovered. And do you know what to be discovered really means? Someone gave you a check. When you hear that someone... <laughs> Taking seriously, your money has said you <laughs> Yeah, it, it, when you read that so-and-so was discovered, right. <laughs> it means they got money, right? Right, yeah, yeah. So we are about discover, be discovered. And if you come to our film school to learn filmmaking, you will be sadly disappointed because we do not teach filmmaking. What we do is we make filmmakers, teaching people how to acquire the skills, of course, they need, but how to create a sustainable career yeah. as a creative in the, in the film industry in this case. Do you, um, do, do, you, do, you, do you do the business end? I'm assuming that must be part of it. Yeah, like raising money, right, okay. types of deals. The so in, in terms of putting a film uh, into Rain Dance, is that just you open up? Open submissions, yes. Open submissions, so the people that have done the film, it doesn't have to go through somebody else no, to send it no. in. Better if it doesn't. But yeah, yeah. Um, we, we want to go straight to the farmer's gate. We yeah. don't want all the <laughs> weight rows and sales or the middleman in the there. The commission man in yeah. between. <laughs> um, so, and how many, did you say how many admissions you had this 12, year? 12, 12 and a half thousand. 
Right, come on. How do you deal with that? Three million minutes was 14 of us. Suzanne, who's the head of programming last year, watched 1,034 feet. And how long have you got? So how long is this viewing? 14 months. Because we're already working on it. But that's a full-time job. It's a full-time job for six people. Just watching? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's not a bad job. Have you got any openings to watch depends, movies? Uh, I suppose it depends what you're watching, really. That's and of the, I mean, I don't want to pull the curtain back too much, but what are they sitting there with? What are they going right? That what are that what are they looking for? There's three things that make a film that we like at Raindance. One is, and it's all extreme, extreme storytelling. Right. How how are you telling a story differently than anyone else before? Yeah. The second is extreme filmmaking techniques. Did you shoot this in a war zone? Right. Did you shoot it with no money? Did you use uh, yeah. new technology? Yeah. And of course, to come into rain dance, it needs to be extremely entertaining. Right. Okay. So, and so it's, it's the extreme thing. Right. Yeah, it's fun because we oh, our films our films are social impact. Many of our documentaries are are the documentaries that will not be shown in other film festivals. We had one two years ago about, during lockdown about the last public execution in America, where the guy lived thirty three times, survived execution. Oh. Did they just go look, mate? Go on, off you go. You're right. And then finally you, you... they said, okay. <laughs> <laughs> But no one else would show this film because right. the, the graphics in it are just so extreme. Yeah. We had another one about female genital mutilation with 11 so-called religious ceremonies right. that would just make male or female cringe. Yeah. Other stories about, um, you, know, you know, racism. We've had a film this year called Hostile, which is about immigrant families here, Asian families in Britain, how they're made to feel like they should leave. Right. Uh, and 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 that's sort of the prejudice. Again, all the other British fel- film festivals said no, it's too political. But we thought this was a story that needed to be seen, uh, told and seen. And that filmmaker is her her career skyrocketing now. But oh, well, we also show comedies. Best Sellers with Michael Caine was a f- comedy. People actually laughed, and he was there. And he's a wonderful man. So, what do you look for in a comedy? Because you can't go for the extreme that. You, no, of course you? you can. Extreme. Yeah. You were telling some funny stories earlier. I did my cataract thing. People were cringing, but <laughs> oh, it was. Right, so you, mean. you had a smile on your face. I, I like the fact that you do you're, it's things that people can't get seen elsewhere. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it, it, we're, we're disruptive. You see, 38 times since 1993 have been turned down by public funding here in the UK. I've never once had a oh, penny. Right. We eat what we kill, yeah. and many times we walk home. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. But well, no. But you I, know what that's like. And yeah, I, yeah. You clean the toilets. But you've been around a long time. That, that, how, how has the big money not sort of bought you off? Do you get offers of like a... We're a bit too contemporary for most of the major brands. You're you just see, too scary. You, yeah. We're doing stuff that is a little... Uh, the brands are now sponsoring stuff that we did five years ago. Right, yeah. But we've moved ahead. <laughs> so right, yeah, you're always on the edge and they won't do the edge. Bit so. like you guys, bit like you guys too, right. you know? Yeah, it's funny because I, I learnt... I mean, I wish I had learned it two years before, but the, like, the comedy pilot that we put together, that's the tending thing, it was well done, but it tends to come back of like... It's not extreme enough. It's not character. It's like, I, I I mean, we were joked about like, I'm not putting a wig on and falling over because that's what you want. It's like, they didn't want nuance. It was just, no, we want the extreme. We want the, we it's want a to, TV it's show. like, we want something for the trailer. It's, do you know what I mean? It's, not, it's something that's extreme to throw. And I thought, well, I don't, I don't want to do that. If um, I had to pick a comedian that would identify Raindance, I'd pick the American comic Lenny Bruce, long gone. Oh, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Who, who but had, that's gone. They, these, there's nobody. That, that, that. Or Sasha Baron Cohen. Oh, yeah, mind that, you, yeah, you got me back a bit there, actually. Yeah. yeah, it might be, it's, I'm still thinking 10 years ago, now it's coming back to that. I think people are a bit more... But we're, we're so numbed by the big lies and, and the media, yeah. the stories that are put out that are put out and sponsored by the government to protect big business and so on. And I think independent podcasts, independent film festivals yeah. need to have the light of day or we're all going to become drugged out zombies, walking to work, walking home, paying our taxes, you hell, know, and, and, hell, and with, yeah. no, with no freedom of thought anymore. And, and, and that's what's frightening me. Then forget about the politics. What about the climate and all that shit that we're doing to the planet? It's oh, don't bring that. Yeah, 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 oh, oh, it's too much to take in. You've sort of got to zone back into your little uh, world and go, right, uh, let me it, just it's, get up and pay the bills. It's, <laughs> so, it's so depressing watching the, uh, the COP26 uh, news coming mm. out. It's so, it's so, <laughs> depre- it's bra- so depressing. And it has, this, it has this, this sort of awful, very slow an- inevitability that sort of, Vanilla, vanilla, yeah, the, vanilla. The, I like that. I was talking to somebody the other day. We was talking about. I said, "Have you noticed? Do you remember everyone used to say climate change doesn't exist? No, they're they're like the policy that the same group were saying doesn't exist. No, 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 
and now they've given up. And now they're saying, well, it was inevitable. It was going to happen. It's just part of the flow. Go, Hang on. You were saying it doesn't. And now you've gone, okay, we can't do that. Let's go on to, well, it was going to happen anyway. It's nothing to do with us. You go, well, I well, saw the shift well, of like. Worlds just end, okay? Just, it's just something that happens. Did you see you the civilization? The Greta Blumberg. I can't remember her name. But the Greta Thunberg. Thunberg. Did you see the blah, blah, blah thing? Yes, I saw. That was good. Yeah. So oh, she, her, 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 she said, her speech, yeah. they've got to do this. They said, blah, 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 yeah. blah, blah, blah. We're going to do this thing. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> it's just nothing. It's just sort of platitudes. Or they change the thing. We've got to buckle down. We go, nothing. You're saying nothing. She's an unlikely um, uh, global superstar, isn't she? she but yeah. what she has done is simply brilliant. She's used social media and yeah. managed her social media profiles to get the attention of millions of people around the world with a message. And that's something also. An unfiltered like, message, it is like if the I voice, can oh. pat myself on the shoulder. By the way, I can't do it today because I did it too much yesterday. I've sprained my shoulder. I'll pat you on the shoulder for you. That'd be fine. I'll, <laughs> I'll take care good. of the pats on the back. Oh, for the... <laughs> but, but but the social media and the branding that you have as a as an artist, as a filmmaker, as a writer, uh, self branding, and also the branding of your project. This has become essential. The way the world has changed with social media. Yeah. So whether you do Twitter, TikTok, oh my God, they want me to start doing TikTok videos. Oh, I can't don't. bear it's, it. I, I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm just catching up to the basics and I don't want to do that. But it's like they keep throwing new stuff. You go, I don't know what you're talking about. I can, I can, I can understand conceptually Facebook. I can understand conceptually Twitter. Yeah. Instagram, I'm start. It's starting to lose me a bit there. I'm starting to get uh, okay. Yeah. Pictures and stories. TikTok, that's like TikTok, to get it. I've lost the rope. I, I can't. I start, I'm not doing it. I watched a few of them, but I'm Three just like videos. Nope, and all that. Yeah, nope, not, not for it. me. Not for yeah. me. I'll, no. I'll ride my life out without that. <laughs> I'll just. I'll crash it. Into I'm the already. Wall. I mean, I'm. How old am I? I'm. I'm 37, and I'm already starting to be like, you know what? I'm. I'm. I'm, I'm already. Say I'm on my already boat. Just raising up the drawbridge <laughs> and, and hunkering down for, for the rest. Of yeah, the, I'm the, pulling up. The nothing's my, uh, changing. This yeah, is me. Yeah, I've got me sandwiches. I'm set. I'm set. I like. I like this bit. This bit's nice. I'm hey, but there's a lesson in history that should inform all of your listeners yeah. about social media and the value of it. I mean, if you're listening and only have a few followers, does not mean you should give up. Remember. The prophet Jesus started with 12 followers. Yeah. <laughs> I, I saw that the uh, the Oscars started with like 350 people. It was like a very, very select yeah. thing. How did the, um, thing about this other day, where did the Cannes Film Festival, what was the origins of that? Did, was it always chic or did it come in with big money or did it start sort of like? It was about, what, 70 years ago down in the south of France, a bunch of people got together and threw a party. 70, I think. 7 zero. Yeah, yeah, a long time ago. A bunch of... Um, American actors were holidaying in the south of France. Ah, let's throw a party. Oh, started there. Okay. And it's wow. just gone, phew, as you know. But it always, it was never cool like rain art. It was never that kind of edgy. It was always quite money. They think they're cool, but then they have Swarovski as a sponsor. So how could you be not well, that's be cool the problem with... you think yeah. they think they're cool cool is what you say like i could say the rain dance is a cool <laughs> thing because it's it's at the edge if you start thinking you're cool now you've you're not you know what i mean you can't say that about yourself i never thought it was a it it's big a bit it's big and it's important but yeah. i would not say it's cool no no if you got your films into can you would tell your friends how cool i got into can oh yeah they were hypocrites don't worry about we'll sell our souls <laughs> if the money comes i went to a party and they said george clooney was there i didn't see him but they said he was there you know? <laughs> oh god i've said this story before it broke my heart it's one of the many things in life that i can't unsee it was um is it kevin spacey's he the one that got done for uh what did he play the where film we, where, where he starts walking at the this? end <laughs> Where he pretends he's crippled and he starts uh, walking. Oh, Usual Suspects. Yeah, yeah that's Kevin Spacey, yeah. Yeah, and, it was, and this is years ago. And it was just, it, I saw I saw the modern world. It scared me where it was. Oh, it, I was in London. <laughs> no, nothing weird. <laughs> I was in London and it, it, there was a film thing going on and he was there. And he was walking along and I sort of recognised him. I didn't really watch TV or film, so I didn't know who, but I knew his face. And there's some girls, it must have been between 18 and 16, something like that. And he went, oh, blah, blah, blah. I thought, okay, so that is that guy. And they ran over, stood next to him, took some photographs, right? So I'm next to you and I've taken the photographs. Once the photographs were taken, didn't even look back at him. They walked off and they all looked at the pictures. And he stood there for about <laughs> two seconds as like a polite man. It's came of space, was it? Yeah. Of like, okay, and then walked off. The, the picture... That they, that they didn't, look, they went like that, took the picture, and the eyes didn't move. They went straight back. They didn't even look back at him. Yeah. And I thought, the, 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 the picture of him 
or is more important than the human being that yep. they were stood next to. And that scared me. Narcissism, isn't it? It scared me. Like, I've got a picture of the guy for other people to see. I'm not actually bothered about you. And the, there was the second that could have gone on for a week where he just went, they're going to come back. And then yeah. just sort of walked off. I thought, oh, my God, they don't care about him. They care about the image of him to show to yeah. other people. Yeah. Oh, oh my God. It, it makes you don't, yeah, you don't care about the meal. It's all about the pictures you can take of the meal that you can show people. Yeah, yeah. that's true. Yeah. But that's the, 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 the self gratification, of... really. Yes, yeah, but yes, if, if you play way. that game, I, I enjoy the meal. To be, I'll, I'll sit yeah. there and enjoy a good meal and go, "Oh, that was a good meal." I yeah, like that. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I should tell people about that. But some people will take the enjoyment from you seeing them yeah, enjoy yeah. the meal. But this is there's a there's a little bit of Schadenfreude in me, which is like, good. I'm glad you play that deal with the devil because now I know you're a person that's only. Your, your, your self-esteem comes through the eyes of other people. So if you start playing that game of look at me, look what I've got, then you only value yourself by that eventually. So you're sort of dealing with the devil yourself. If you just don't care about it, you just live your life, then you don't have those problems. I don't worry what people think about online or whatever because I don't play that. That's not important to me. Once you start thinking it is, then eventually you become more important on camera than you are. Mm. That's why you get the Hollywood well, bit. So it's, there's very little, even... It used to be a thing of celebrities. Celebrities, you know, oh, my life is public and I don't have a private life and it's very difficult to maintain a private life. Now with the internet, it's kind of like, well, everyone's life's a sort of public. What well, By choice, you know, vol they volunteer. But then you've made that deal with it. That's when your yeah. self-esteem becomes so, embodied in that thing on, that you see of me is more important than me, the human being. So I have to be more of that. The only one that's ever seen done it properly is Ricky Gervais. Hmm. He said... I don't care," he said, "because I don't go to these awards. I don't. I don't put myself into that uh, mm. arena, so no one cares. <laughs> so I just, I'm quite happy because nobody. But if you start going, hi, look at me here, look at me there. Eminem, I don't Eminem, know him. Eminem, the rapper, the rapper, white, yeah. white rapper. Yeah. He was big in the '90s and noughties. Yeah. Um, whatever you think of him, he his Twitter account. Um, he's he sort of has 30 million followers, following zero people mm. <laughs> nice yeah i'm like, oh, I'm like that, that's, yeah. that's pretty cool yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what you think. I'm yeah. like, that's hey do you want the secret sauce of how to make either music or a film that yeah. everyone wants of course i was in japan a while ago uh, teaching screenwriting and there was an old fisherman 74 who had sold 51 scripts that became yakuza movies one of them became kill bill tarantino bought it ah. so i asked him what makes a good movie and yeah. he said to me through a translator Elliot San, your body is 75% water. And a good story, a good movie, a good song squeezes your body fluids out of an appropriate pore. <laughs> yeah, well, it's true. Yeah, it's yeah, it's yeah, all yeah, about yeah. the emotion, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. If you don't feel something, right, yeah. I don't give a rat's crap about what you're doing. But if I feel, I'm going to be... I'm going to remember. And if, and if, and you're, you're forgiving. If you're engaged with the story, every story, every film has... Uh, slight lapses. It might have some some fudging of plot elements, you know, that that you that you, you know when you think about it, you go, well, that's a bit convenient, or that was a bit strange mm. that that happened, mm. that the X and Y happened. Um, also, budgetary concerns. Sometimes, you know, some uh, you have to sort of go with it a bit. But when you're engaged emotionally, when you engage with the characters, when you engage with the story, when you care, when you care, yeah. literally, when you care, um, you don't, you, you just go, ah, oh, you, you forget all that, and you just mm. go with it because you 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 invest, you yeah. get invested in the story. I was watching some weird thing on telly the other day. A terrible, terrible Christmas movie, like made recently. It's not even Christmas yet. What are you going to say? You're out of sync. Christmas Halloween, movie. man. Jeez. Halloween. I was flicking through. I was just flicking through the thing, the, the channels. Oh, right. Come. As you do. Like, look, you're not here in the studio, but the muscle above his thumb is extremely well developed <laughs> from doing all the computer <laughs> games. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah that, yeah. that is. Yeah. No. And I do get carpal tunnel. So, yeah. <laughs> so go on. What was you going to say? Um, what was I going to say? Yes. Uh, and yeah, I was flicking through it and I just, I started watching this Christmas film and it was about an influencer um, trying to find the real meaning of Christmas, you know, oh, um, and I was like, ugh. Yeah. And it was, ugh, but, and I, it was very, it wasn't very good. And then all of a sudden I, I started to, to notice the lighting was really bad on this. And this was like a film on like Channel 5 yeah. at like two in the afternoon with some money. I mean, it wasn't a big budget, but it had some money yeah. there. Obviously at least had enough to, uh, for, for like a TV budget for an yeah. hour and a half, a TV movie. And I just noticed that the light, it was like, there's shadows in spaces. <laughs> and there's shadows like with these things. I was like, can they not get a board or something? Yeah, something simple. And then simple. I just became really distracted about this, right? And I watched the whole film just with the lighting. Just Oh, God, just and criticizing. Again, and again, it's such a small, minor niggle that's like, 
but I obviously, because I wasn't invested in the story, didn't care about the couch. So I just became fixated on the lighting. Have you seen, um, uh, uh, St- Stallone's just released a documentary, um, Rocky vs. Drago. No. It's really good. You can watch it online now on it's YouTube. A documentary? Yeah, it's like an hour and 40 minutes. They've it's re- on a mobile phone. Yes. What? It's, um, so They've what- done a re-edit. No, they've done a re-edit of Rocky Ford. Yeah, no, so this is the documentary on that. I call it a documentary. What happened is they went into lockdown. Mm. So he said, while well, we can't do anything in lockdown, what I'm going to do is go back to the Rocky versus Drago cool. and re-edit the whole thing. So they just hire this one studio. It's just two bits. It's him and the sound guy on the computer, which you can see in one room, and a guy doing it on a mobile phone. And they just made a documentary over like wow. an hour and a half. Cool. That's 40 minutes. Cool. Well, There's talk, a trailer. Talking about the edit then. Yeah, for the documentary. Oh, okay. And I'll tell you what, this has been building up for a few years with this guy. He's underrated, mate. He is seriously Still underrated. Known. The way he talks. Oh, I know. He's very he's, good. I mean, Schwarzenegger said, how do you, so yeah, he's, how do you, he's ex- not, he's not a dummy. What yeah. would you explain yeah. one word about Stallone? He said artist. And I thought, and now from stuff that I've put, I've heard him talk. And then this really pushed over the edge. So it's an hour and 40 minutes, this documentary that you can watch on YouTube. And, um, he goes back and he's so angry at the stuff he's done. And this is Rocky Four. He wasn't like Rocky One. Mm. He was saying, "Go on, what's he? no, no, go." Ahead. Um, I, I have a lot to say about he Rocky said, Four. Okay. There's no emotion. <laughs> he said, "I didn't have the confidence to put emotion in it. Why did I? Why did I let um, Carl Weathers die? He shouldn't have died because he didn't deserve." That's, that, go on, what was you going to no, say? No, that's the that's the motivation. That's of course he could just he should have died. Of course, yeah. and also his character's finished. So. No, well, what he but, says is, "Go on." Okay, Rocky Four is. A, a, a bad film and it's all over the place but it's kind of brilliant at the same time and it's a real thing of its time as well because it's got all the soviet stuff you know yeah. um weird reagan ideology you know the bootstrapping and stuff um it's very conservative very sort of you know yeah. hey let's go do it you know very, very americana at that they're the 80s i think very very good exa- you know really good exemplary film of that type you know along with like uh, you rambo 2 maybe um and uh and I think to try and edit it into a less bad film defeats the point. Mm. Yeah, em- was, embrace it. When he was embrace being it. so it's a bad tough film. on it. Embrace it. He was yeah. talking about the speech and the thing, and he said, I didn't know to do that. I would have had more confidence. I would have used longer sentences and all that. But I said, but I'm thinking, but that wouldn't have worked at the time. So what you did, the over-the-top 80, that, that work, that is what was required then. To go back and say, well, I'm going to add stuff in, might not have been right f- for the they, time. Very much so, yeah. And they got rid of the robot. They got rid of Happy yeah. Birthday, Paulie. Well, huge respect about uh, Stallone for me is that he did Copland, played an overweight yeah. mm-hmm. uh, a cop who couldn't make his mind up to prove that he could act. Yeah. And that destroyed his action hero um, yeah, yeah. character. It took him about to 10 that. years to get it back. Yeah. Just from whatever. But, brilliant I, acting. I remember I just, it was a simple thing when you say about, um, he said, Rocky wasn't, it's not a sports movie. He said, it's a love film with boxing in it. He said, it's not a boxing film with a love story. He said, it's a love story. Boxing is in the background. The guy doesn't even win. Like, yeah. I thought, no, oh, he wow. doesn't. People, everyone always forgets that, but he doesn't. He just goes the distance. Because I've that's seen, the point. it wasn't autobiography, but it's a biography. And when he was talking about putting Rocky together and having no money and turning money down when you said having to sell your dog mm. and your girlfriend's left you, I thought, wow, that's sell like... your dog? He had a dog. He had to sell it because he didn't have any money to feed it. And he's like in a studio and he had nothing. He said, everything was fine. Dog for sale. But then to go dog from... For sale. Yeah, to go from that to um, then winning an Oscar. But that's so persistence, goes, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. And not saying, not well, ever hearing the word the, no. But the whole way through, like they were saying, like in the fight scenes, he was going, they the, had the best fight choreographer for the thing. And he said, no, the guy doesn't. And the guy said, who are you to be telling me? Like you're just, so we walked off. So he said, no, I'm going to do the fight scenes differently. It can't be that camera angle and me throwing the punch. Let's make it messy. And the guy said, you don't know what you're talking about. You've done nothing. And mm. so the guy sudded it off. He said, but then it led on to what it, how it led on to. Mm-hmm. And they said, no, he had to win at the end. You go, no, it's not that. It's not that sort of thing. No. And the scene, he said, that they wanted to cut out the scene where he's in the bed talking to Adrian, saying like, I just want to survive. And they're saying, no, it's not a hero. Cut that out. And he said, you can't cut that out. He said, that was at the end of the day. Even the crew were against it. It's not an important scene. He's going, no, that's everything. He said, you, he said, give me one take. Let me have one take. And they went, all right, do it quickly. And afterwards they said, oh no, that was the, that's why he's doing this. It's not about the, but mm. the way he talks, when you, when he's explaining why he's editing, why is he standing there? Why did I do that like that? Why didn't I have that over there? Why didn't I have, why did I not say that? The Carl Weathers thing, he said, what I should have done is had him in a wheelchair because then he would have been my train. He would have been my Mickey for the training. 
He said it was quite to just kill him. He didn't deserve to be like that. Um, but he, he, the way he talks about the whole thing, I mean, he stood by the TV, he keeps getting up eating his chocolate bars. Like, this is, change that, drop the light from there. Why did I cut the thing? What happened there? And it's, it was fascinating just to watch it play out. You're literally watching somebody edit a film. Um, but I liked that film at the time, and it? it did what I, it did. As I said, I mean, I, I think it's, I think it's both great and terrible at the same yeah. time. It's a fantastic watch yeah. and really bizarre. Um, so many montages. Montages of things. So have a scene and then about five minutes later, we'll have a montage of basically what you well, just the, the, in the, the ed, in the original, it was supposed that Drago had a lot to say. And the idea was, like, you can see him being filmed. It's a bit weird when Drago... Well, they just got Dolph Lundgren on set and they're like, no, we, we, no, we, they, we have to they, cut this guy. He was an accident. They just saw him in a restaurant. The... Um, uh, yeah, they said because the thing was there was supposed to be more nuance where he would like they'd ask him a question and he'd be going to answer mm. and he'd be answering it, mm. but then somebody would look at him and then he'd just he'd shut up again as if like I'm not like I'm being told well, I'm his not, mind is I'm not acting yeah. like this I have to he'd, like they'd say something he'd go to speak and then somebody would talk and he'd, then he'd just sort of like do that again like he's he's trying to and it was supposed to be like at the end you feel sorry for him. Because he's, you can see he's he's not that robot. Yep. He's trying to be, but he's not allowed to be. So he's having to act like this. Yeah, and I thought, I, oh, you, you sort of get that. He's just a sort of boxer. But there's bits his... when they're filming and they show the cuts away where they're laughing and Drago's laughing with all the. And I think, no, I don't want to see that. I don't want to see. You laugh. guys should pick a film that everyone can see, and then you should say, watch this film this week, and then do your dissect it. Yeah. It'd be fun. I did just watch the uh, the making of the Exodus, the twenty fifth anniversary that um, Mark Camo did. They've been put back. I thought it was a new documentary, it's not. But again, just that fascinating. You go, that would not have been getting made. Everyone would have been getting sued. Yeah, you had th the, the things that they were using people hurting themselves because they didn't get it. Oh, well, just well, get well with, it. with everything that's happened recently, I think health and safety is a big concern on sets. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Oh God, the stuff that was going. They say well, they said I got hurt there, and they used that bloody scene where I got. I actually got hurt, and I was crying there, telling them, there was just. I remember there's a or maybe you got dead if they yeah, a real yeah, bullet, you know, yeah. like in the, the 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 jaws, you know the scene because I, I used to freak me out the scene where the girl drowns at the where she gets pulled under. The the opening. Yeah, and she says, No, they pulled me up under too soon and I couldn't breathe. So when I was coming up, I was trying to tell him because they were pulling the girl's legs down. You know, and it's dark and she goes, yeah. she gets pulled in, they pull her down again and she pops up. She said, They pulled me down too quick when they had two guys pulling my legs down and I didn't get a breath. So they pulled me down and I couldn't breathe. So when I came up, I had what? And I was trying to tell them to stop, but they were pulling me back down. Wow. So what you're seeing is somebody drowned. It's wow. a great take though, isn't it? Yeah, oh, it's it works. It's a great scene. It again, yeah. you know, oh, wow. Yeah. Um, all right, we've got to go back to you. The, uh, <laughs> right, let's do 10 minutes. The Go Fund Yourself Rain Dance Badge. You've been very kind to give us all this stuff that I'm going to read through. <laughs> and the record you've given me, what was the record? Take Me to the River. That was from a documentary we had at Raindance uh, two weeks ago now. So we can keep this? Yes, I've oh, given that to you. Thanks, it's thanks a really documentary much. about the the origin of the music in New Orleans. And of course, that's world music, blues, jazz, African music all mixed in together. And a brilliant documentary from Be Like Me. New Orleans. Cool. And some of those names you may not recognize, people like uh, Bobby Rush and so on. These are legends. Many of them are dead now since that was made two years ago. Bobby Rush. I forgot to be your lover. I like those old sort of records. Oh, you love it. Just the, I know the, the names. I mean, Ain't No Sunshine. Do you know what I mean? It's nothing like, there's nothing gratuitous. There's nothing egotistical. I wish I had an answer. That's the name of the, that's great. Just, yeah. You, you, I feel, yeah. yeah and, nothing. You, you've got an idea of what that is as well. You know, you read that sometimes and you go, yeah, I think I've got an idea. Trying to live my life without you. Yeah, I get it. I'm, I know what I'm going to get from that. <laughs> um, so, what's this? so this is the program. Well, that got. was just a leaflet we put out listing all the events and things. We had something called the House of Rain Dance with lots of events and parties and Virtual happy reality. hour, free alcohol. Ooh. And then uh, we had the movies and uh, half a dozen cinemas around London, the Curzon Chain, the Genesis in East London, a wonderful place. Wonderful. Um, yeah. VR so what have you got coming up soon then? What's, uh, Pardon? What have you got coming up? Well, on Saturday, the 20th of November, we have a one-day class called the... Saturday Film School. What is what? What is that? So it's not film. This isn't filmmaking. Like it's you a said. filmmaking class. Bit of writing, bit of directing, bit of producing, and a bit of how you break into the film industry. Ten till five with an hour for lunch. A bunch of people coming to our office at Charing Cross. Oh, okay. So if you look at our website, so you your can, office is where the thing. The, yeah. The, okay. Yeah. We got a studio, and we put up folding chairs and right. Okay. Crappy coffee. Oh, so the, the photographs of that I've seen online. That's you, your place. It's yeah. not hire. I thought you'd hired that. We do hire it, but we hire it by the year, not by the hour. Oh. 
<laughs> so it's yours for all those purposes. <laughs> yeah, by the year, yeah. 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 Um, so, I mean, we, we've been a bit cut short because you know we've, you've got to get off. You've been yeah, very yeah. kind to give us your time. What? Um, oh, it's a pleasure. My what's, pleasure. What's, what's, you, you haven't got a podcast or anything, have you? No, I've been oh, doing a lot on. of Instagram stuff, uh, which I did during lockdown, but did about 250, like 20 minute at lunchtimes. Oh. But that was, I haven't done it for a while, but uh, it's just time commitment, isn't it? It is, yeah. Yeah. On on top of everything, it's so no. This is the problem. I've got. It's a full time job, and obviously that's why some people do it. It's a full time job. No, but some people. Um, I shouldn't say this on air because it's it's like don't go on, say it. Go on, go for it. I'm just worried about other people. No, no, it's not that. He says that that sometimes, and I'm a bit like, (laughs) no, I desperately want to hear this. But then also, I don't. No, I think you trust it. No, um, it's the certain people I meet, and I think. Right. Why are you not more well known? If you because you're a good communicator. Where I met people that are communicated, but uh, mm. communicate, but they're not good communicators. I think you you haven't got that thing. Mm. You have got a, like I can feel I'm talking to you, and I can feel like there's a lot of stuff in the background that you could talk about. <laughs> um, so I think right, you should. You're the one the ones that should have a podcast. You you should be talking more. There's uh, I don't want to name names, but I'll just say you. But yeah, you're one of those people that's got things to talk about. I think that's a better way to do it. Mm. So you should have things. Well, that's the thing with people. I've noticed, like I got them in the magazine, that I'd meet people that weren't pushing themselves as a personality forward. Mm. And I realised, oh, they're the interesting people. So it's up to you to find them and pull them out because they don't care that much. But they're the ones you want. You don't want the other ones. I'm more of a, I'm a, more the behind the scenes person, the one that helps other people. And that, I, I, I do front the festival and the British Independent Film Awards, but my real joy in life is helping someone. Yeah. Go up and let them do the front. But that comes through your stories and speech. Do you know what I mean? It's not, this is how you do that. That's, it's the biggest thing with me was like, leave a story behind you. That will be around longer. Like, tell them where you've been and what, how you failed. That's part of the teaching process, if I can say that. Um, but anyway, okay. So, uh, so what's coming up for you in the next sort of like few years? Is there anything big? Is there anything? I also uh, practice my visual art and my goal is to have an exhibition somewhere cool in the next Sculpting. few months. Sculpting? Sculpture, drawings, paintings, that sort of stuff. That's that. I also write. I've written a novel. I'm waiting to hear back from the publisher. So I've done that. Um, What's the novel like? Basics of it. Can you... When I was a kid in Africa, my dad took me and forty Somali nomads up the Horn of Africa, twenty-one days, twenty-one nights. Um, and every night we had a different chapter of a story about a woman on the desert, eight hundred years ago. The last night, we were half an hour, half a day's walk from Mecca. We could see the lights in the city. And my dad was probably the first Christian to be allowed to do the kava. We flew back to Mogadishu in one of those old DC-3s. But three weeks later, he was dead. Oh. So I didn't think about this for a long time. But I, I, it's come out recently, 21 short chapters, um, Somali proverbs like, never walk into a snake pit with your eyes open. Hang on. Do you know why? Walk into an eyes with your eyes open. Because if you see the snake, you get thre- afraid. Oh, oh right. <laughs> fear. I was going for eye to eye contact, you know, make them aggressive. It's more Western than. <laughs> okay. Okay. It's, I suppose it's like uh, that old Churchill quote if you're, if you're going through hell, don't stop. Exactly. Yeah. It's the same yeah. thing. So I'm working on that. Um, yeah. And I, I run rain dance. I love meeting filmmakers. I still do a lot of teaching. I'm always interested in finding out someone with the next new idea, the next new way of doing something. Usually people's success in their career. And by the way, when I success, there's artistic yeah, of course, and yeah. commercial success. It could yeah. be one or the other course, or both, yeah. thank God. But when they're blocked, it's usually because they're not doing something simple like the marketing, the pitching. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I help. Well, that's the, the problem with creatives. It's like it's the it's the opposite of what they want to do. They've always got that. They have to. You've got to meet that other person because they just can't be forced. There, to... There's always that business side. Isn't yeah. Because you oh, can be creative and you can come yeah. up with wonderful things. Create. My dad, my dad on the farm used to take milk into the local village and we had glass bottles with blue Grove Dairy on the side. And one day they sent bottles with orange. He, well, my hell, we've used blue for generations. But he came home from market that day a whole hour earlier. Couldn't figure it out. Back to blue hour later. And I remember a little kid, I go out to the dairy and he fills up two bottles, one with the orange and one with the blue. And he's looking at it and he goes, you know what, son? The milk in the orange labeled bottle looks creamier. So we went oh. back to orange. And I think that's the goal of yeah. any artist is to make your product look creamier yeah. than anyone else's because then you'll sell it. 
But my, I think my problem with anything I do is I can't watch them because there's, it, 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 I've realized it will never be perfect. Nothing will, and I can't ah, let it but go. You're, that's, that's being a perfectionist, and that's a sign of but it lack doesn't... of confidence, you see. You have to have the confidence to make mistakes. And remember, no creative project is ever finished. It is simply abandoned. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, that's nice. Yeah. Yeah, you, you fixed me. <laughs> Just, I couldn't figure out, thinking, what's the art? I can't, I can't, it won't, I can't let things go. But somebody did say to me, your perfection slows you down. He said, he's well, it's not. It's true. It's a good, it's a good quality, but it's also a, a weakness. It's the end, yeah. A strength and a weakness. You can spend so much time correcting the typos in your scripts, not realizing that it doesn't matter. Send it out. Someone's going to say you're an A. Yeah. And if you don't send it out, no one's going to see it. Yeah. And no one will know you've written this great script until two weeks after your death in the stench right. yeah, st yeah. <laughs> creeps into the hallway. I think I'm going to say that from now on. Just, <laughs> darling, I've abandoned the, the project. <laughs> it's done. <laughs> Do not talk to me. It is dead to me. Okay, that I felt a sense of relief having you just said that. <laughs> um, right, so, oh, so, uh, so you've got a lot, quite a lot going on then. You might even live in a podcast. You only knows. You never know what's what's in the future. Future. What's in the future? Yeah. Um, I'll sleep when it's over. How about that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Listen. So th you've got an open door to come in for anything you've got Thank going you. on. Um, so Likewise. I'll, I'll look at our website. If there's anything that. either of you guys want, or your listeners, just call me up, and we can figure something out. Yeah, we've got we've, we've got another. We've just written another thing, haven't we? Which I had an idea about turning it into a three part, like a trilogy. The idea we've got this mockumentary. Okay. But I'll talk to you about it after. Yeah, yeah. But that's done. Um, uh, is there a, can you, we've just, I've just sent it to a producer to have a look, live around here actually. Is it rude to then send it to another production company? Uh, Until they've got no, back to you. They said rude. six weeks to get back to me. I thought it was quite uh, long. What, what I would do to number one is say, hey, look, I haven't heard back. I'm going to send it off to your competitor. And but they did they... say six weeks. Oh, I can't do that. That's the personal relationships to me. Really, I can't talk to people like that. It's awkward. It do I wait awkward. six weeks? I mean, it's up the fourth week now, so I think do I just ride it out? I think I think you should. Um, I've always been really. You nice. could on Monday say, "Hey, how's it going?" Got you know, you said six weeks a month ago. Good lie. You said. Can I say weeks. Elliot Grove told me? <laughs> <laughs> Don't stop Talk dropping to him. people's names. <laughs> Don't, uh, <laughs> Nothing to do with me. No, no, but no, Elliot no, said no, I should no, maybe. <laughs> right, listen. We'll let you go. You'll, 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 you'll know what to do. You'll know what to do. But whatever you do, remember that the work that you do is so important because there's nothing more important than cinema and film. Your stories are important because it's the only way people that we know and we all know many people who are consumed by hatred and hatred comes from misunderstanding of how people live and work and play in other cultures you know and cinema movies and your podcast is the easiest way to take people to these other worlds yeah to bring down the hatred and i think yeah. transporting we, ideas into different places yeah if we don't do that and if we just stay stum at home watching the footy or yeah. whatever then then this world has could become a, yeah. a very dangerous place and i'm worried about the so we're all sort of spreading ideas across the globe that's what we're doing really at his basic level um right we're gonna let you get off elliot it's been a pleasure yeah, it really has. we're gonna Thank have you back much. on again <laughs> whether you want to or not <laughs> but you have got an open door here but uh, we'll let you Thank show you. and again one it's always i've always thought of the rain dust as one of the coolest mm. ones going because you are on the edge of the newcomers so that <laughs> oh, is yeah, that's yeah. what it is how flattering I'm i told you I'd, keep, I'd be patting you on the back i told you you, yeah. you have and i'm worried that your door is a standard door with my head might be so large i won't get out <laughs> <laughs> right so that's it elliot thank you very much thank brother you. Yeah. take care elbow bye -bye. bumps that's it yeah take care. cheers take care. Oh, boom oh. That's the only one I'm ever going to do. Here's your story, let's begin. The world is fine, come on, dive in. The future's here, it's right before your eyes. Step by step, you're on your way. You're welcome to a brighter day. Don't you know it feels good to be alive? You could be larger than...